This video will discuss various internal problems which can afflict saltwater aquarium fish and possible treatment options. Symptoms for both internal worms and parasites are the same. White stringy feces, pinched stomach, faded coloration, unusual thinness. However, it is very important to notice multiple symptoms before just assuming that it's internal worms or parasites. A fish with just white stringy feces, for example, can just simply mean that it's an intestinal irritation due to a change in the diet, shipping stress, medications in the water, or just some other non-disease reason. If internal worms or parasites are suspected, it is better in this situation to lace food with medication rather than to dose it in the water. In order to accomplish this, see the treatment recipe shown on the screen. However, if a fish is not eating, then you do have the option of dosing the water with either API General Cure or Fritz Paracleanse. The hope is that the fish will drink enough of the medicated water for it to be useful. It is sometimes difficult to distinguish between a fish with a gas bubble in its swim bladder and simple constipation. In both cases, the primary symptom is a round protrusion. However, as seen in the diagram on right, a fish's swim bladder is both above and behind the stomach and intestines. So a bona fide gas bubble in the swim bladder, as seen with the antheus at left, will always be higher up or behind the stomach area. It is also important to remember that swim bladder problems are usually only encountered with newly acquired fish collected in deep water. This is due to improper decompression at the collection site. Also, sometimes a fish with a swim bladder disorder will swim vertically with its tail up. Basically, the back half of the fish will seem more buoyant than the front half, and the fish will swim in a way to compensate for that. The fish may also stay near the surface of the water, or even float, unable to swim downwards. A fish with bloat in the stomach area can usually be fixed by sprinkling a pinch of Epsom salt in the feed for a few days, are by feeding peeled, boiled green peas. Nori will also help. In extreme cases, the fish should be isolated to a quarantine tank and canamycin dosed every 48 hours. Diarrhea is a known side effect of canamycin. But what if your fish has a gas bubble in its swim bladder? This video will demonstrate venting a swim bladder. We will also include a link in the comment section to Rich's article on venting a fish's swim bladder. So, got a black cap basset who was not decompressed properly. I'm going to try and release the pressure and pop the bubble. Let's see how this works. Suck the air out. Just like that. A little bit of iodine. And get this fish right back into its water. To make matters even more confusing is fish can have internal bacterial infections. This is a proliferation of a harmful strain of bacteria inside the fish's body. Bacteria can infect any area of the body. Symptoms include bloating or swelling, redness or bruising, faded coloration, and protruding scales. Unfortunately, if bloating occurs in the stomach or swim bladder area, it can be difficult, if not impossible, to distinguish an internal infection from constipation or a gas bubble in the swim bladder. So sometimes it makes sense to alternate between food soaking a dewormer and antibiotic to cover both possibilities. Most antibiotics can be soaked in food to fight harmful bacteria. Metronidazole combined with neomycin sulfate in a medicated fish food slurry can be a very good full spectrum internal gut infection treatment treating both aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. However, we will include a link in the comment section 
which lists all antibiotics that can be laced in food. And finally, we come to spinal injuries. This is mostly a wrath problem, although any fish can suffer a spinal injury. A fish with a spinal injury will usually swim vertically with its tail pointed down. Sometimes the fish just lays on the bottom of the tank or sometimes swims in a swirling motion. Most believe spinal injuries are caused when the fish jumps and hits a hard object or even swims or rams into one. However, there is some evidence that internal flagellates and or harmful bacteria, which has migrated to the spinal column, may actually be contributing factors to spinal injuries. Unfortunately, there are no effective treatments for spinal injuries, and in most cases, prognosis is bleak. Thank you for watching this video. See links in the comments section for more information, and visit my website to get more fish disease and treatment advice.